All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, and thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to present today. We have uh, no disclosures. Now, to start, uh, just a brief introduction. Uh, prolonged postoperative ileus is generally defined as a delay in the return of GI function uh, after surgery. It's a major cause of uh, patient discomfort. It's associated with increased uh, uh, length of stay and associated health costs. The incidence varies significantly in the literature, anything between 2% to 60%, depending on the definition that the study uses. And the highest incidence we know is associated with colorectal surgery. Now, enhanced recovery pathways have multiple elements aimed at enhancing GI recovery after surgery. Uh, for instance, our McGill enhanced recovery pathway shown here on the screen uh, includes elements like early feeding, uh, avoidance of nasogastric tube insertion, uh, early mobilization, chewing gum, uh, with, all, uh, with the aim of enhancing rec uh, GI recovery after uh, surgery. Nonetheless, during our daily practice, we still see uh, post-operative alias as a, a common encounter. Uh, we therefore uh, designed this study uh, to estimate the incidence of uh, prolonged post-operative alias within an enhanced recovery pathway using multiple definitions as they appear in the literature and to identify predictors of uh, prolonged post-operative alias within an established enhanced recovery pathway. We used uh, our local prospectively collected data uh, that was entered in the, into the ERAS uh, database between September 2012 to December 2014. These are elective colorectal procedures uh, done by colorectal uh, surgeons uh, within a unified enhanced recovery pathway in a single institution. We've excluded patients that we thought they are pre predisposed to developing secondary ileus. So patients who <clears throat> suffered from bowel obstruction or uh, intra-abdominal abscess, bowel perforation, or an stomatic leak were excluded from the analysis. Our, pri our primary definition that we use in the study uh, was uh, adapted from Vather's study, and it's the inability to tolerate an oral diet and the absence of bowel movement of lettuce over the last 24 hours on or after post-op day, post day four. We've also estimated the incidence of ileus using multiple definitions as they appear in the literature according to a recent systematic review. To, to assess for the predictors of uh, ileus within our study, we use, we use a Bayesian model averaging analysis. It's a fairly uncommon method for clinicians, but briefly in Bayesian model averaging, uh, the all all the models resulting from including or exclusion of, uh, uh, of variables are considered, and the, the, the strength of association between the variable and the outcome is averaged, uh, is averaged across all the models. This, this, brings you, this gives you a, an overall strength of association, which is reported as a posterior effect probability, or PEP. P, the higher the PEP, the higher the, strong, the strength of association between the variable and the outcome. So, to build our model, we, uh, we entered variables that have been previously identified in the literature as predictors of uh, prolonged postoperative ileus. And uh, most of these variables are self-explanatory. I'm gonna go through just a few of them. So uh, for instance, intraoperative fluids, we looked at compliance with our uh, uh, local intraoperative fluid resuscitation protocol in which we define uh, compliance as uh, patients who undergo laparoscopic surgery receive less than three ml of uh, uh, fluid per kilogram per hour and patients who undergo uh, open surgery receive less than five ml uh, per kilogram per hour of uh, fluids. Uh, Blood loss was entered as, as a continuous variable in units of 50 ml. Epidural analgesia is pretty standardized in our, uh, in our institution, and we use a local anesthetic with a short-acting opioids. And IV opioids, we looked at the use of IV opioids in the first 48 hours postoperatively, regardless of the dose or the duration of the use of IV opioids. Now, coming down to the results, we identified 440 patients uh, who underwent elective surgery during this uh, study period. We've excluded, excluded 117 patients, uh, either because these were not followed prospectively or they were predisposed to secondary ileus. And the final number included in the analysis was 323 patients. 66% uh, of these patients had prime, the malignancy as their primary uh, indication for surgery. 81% was scheduled for laparoscopic surgery with a 9% conversion rate. 33% of these patients had uh, uh, their procedure involved rectal resection with a 25% of new stoma formation. The incidence of 
prolonged postoperative ileus was 19% using our primary definition, or 62 patients out of 323 patients. Now, looking back at the literature to identify other definitions, most studies used a similar uh, marker of GI recovery, but chose a different postoperative day after which the lack of GI recovery they considered to be abnormal. So looking at successive time points, the incidence of ileus can range anything between 59% to 11% based on the postoperative day that is chosen to be after which uh, ileus is considered uh, uh, abnormal. And the other definition that kept recurring in the, in the literature is the use of NG insertion or nasogastric tube insertion as a marker of ileus. Now, using this definition, the incidence is 80%, pretty similar to our primary definition. However, the population that is identified by these two new definitions are different. Out of, uh, out of our 19%, out of our 62% patients who we identified as have ileus based on our primary definition, 32% of them did not require the insertion of NG tube. Now, running our descriptive analysis, we, saw, we found multiple associations between uh, prolonged postoperative ileus and, uh, and, uh, and the higher uh, ASA scores, inflammatory bowel disease, open surgery, rectal resections, new stomas, uh, IV opioids, longer surgeries with longer incisions, and higher blood loss. However, when these variables are entered into a Bayesian model averaging analysis, we identify two predictors uh, with the highest strength of association with ileus. Number one was blood loss with 99.3% uh, PEP, and IV opioids with 94.4% uh, uh, PEP, or posterior effect probability. We've also identified two weak uh, predictors of ileus, uh, the use of epidural, uh, epidural analgesia with a PEP of 56.3% and intraoperative compliance with intraoperative fluid management protocol, which came up to 54.8%. So to summarize, uh, we believe based on this data that postoperative uh, uh, ileus remains a significant morbidity after colorectal surgery, even in the context of an enhanced recovery pathway, with the incidence varying widely depending on the definition used. Blood loss and the use of intravenous opioids are strong predictors of uh, uh, prolonged postoperative post ileus. And epidural analgesia potentially impairs GI recovery, which lower, uh, while lower volume intraoperative fluid may be protective, although it is very important to note here that the evidence for this is weak. And therefore, to conclude, uh, we think there is a need for a wider dissemination of a consensus definition of prolonged postoperative ileus. The use of intravenous, intravenous opioids is a modifiable strong predictor of prolonged postoperative ileus in an enhanced recovery pathway. Uh, which is interestingly, although in our enhanced recovery pathway, we do uh, implement uh, opioid sparing analgesia uh, protocols. Nonetheless, it became up as the highest, the strongest modifiable predictor uh, in our data. And the impact of epidural analgesia and intravenous fluid management on uh, ileus within enhanced recovery pathway should be further evaluated in bigger studies. Thank you very much.